I, I guess I've wanted to be a writer since I was 10 or 11. I was a type of kid who liked to hang indoors. And so I would read a lot of comic books, Marvel, X-Men, and Spider-Man. And then my, you know, my parents, uh, Stephen King novels, my sister's H.P. Lovecraft books. And so uh, it seemed from that age, it'd be cool to either draw X-Men or write X-Men or be in the X-Men. And, uh, and that stayed with me all through college. I didn't actually write anything in college, but I wore black and smoked cigarettes. And then uh, eventually started working at the Village Voice, the newspaper in New York City. And that's really when I uh, started writing about arts, about books and music, and became a writer, learning how to edit and uh, keep a deadline so you get paid, so you can buy food and pay your rent. I wanted to be a writer, but didn't actually write anything. And so um, it wasn't until I started writing journalism and became a freelancer that I had time to start writing novels. I never really wrote short stories. I never sort of figured it out. The, uh, the story always got bigger and bigger. Um, but being a freelancer gave me the time uh, to work on a really bad novel. Um, uh, I got an agent, I was very excited. Then I got 25 rejections and my agent dumped me. Um, but it's times like that when you sort of realize that uh, you're either going to keep going or not. And so I think I became a writer once uh, I realized no one liked my stuff. So I just had no choice but to keep going and start another novel. And that was The Intuitionist, which came out uh, in 99. I don't have anybody I'm, I'm writing for an audience in mind. I, um, when I started writing, I thought uh, my first book, The Intuitionist, might be great for some 16-year-old weirdo who might read it and then think, oh, I can write too. Uh, you can do strange things in fiction, and it's not all everything you're being taught in school, the novels that you're being taught in school. Uh, but then my first book came out, and then there wasn't 16-year-old weirdos in the audience. It was uh, quite a variety of folks. So I don't think about who's going to pick up the book uh, anymore. I, I switch genres a lot, uh, moving from, say, pseudo-detective novels to uh, non-fiction um, to horror novels to keep it inter you know, in interesting and, and uh, compelling for me. Um, like a lot of people, I like different kinds of stories and I like figuring out why I like the detective novel or detective movies uh, and what I don't like and how can I make this sort of kind of storytelling my own. What do I like about first person non-fiction or don't like about it? How can I make this storytelling mode my own? So. Um, I figure if you know how to do a certain kind of story, why do it again? Um, there's no sort of challenge there. And um, uh, so it's you know, sort of worked and keeps the work fresh for me. Um, I don't think there's any one element that uh, characterizes most of my work. Uh, there's certain themes that keep coming up. Um, cities, pop culture, race in America. Um, uh, humor, if I get some jokes in, I'm always happy. And so, sometimes you're telling a story that can accommodate one or more of those ideas. Sometimes you don't. Um, uh, the main thing is just to uh, figure out what this new story can present as a challenge. Uh, what will I have learned when I get to the end of it? Um, uh, if there's an element of fear uh, involved and not knowing how it's going to work out uh, in terms of execution, that's always good. At this point, I've had eight books, and so I'm always getting different kinds of inspiration for each idea. Um, sometimes it's a, a what-if question. I have a book about John Henry, who's a folklore hero in the United States uh, during the 1800s. And I thought, how could I update this industrial age anxiety figure for the information age? So that's a sort of a what-if premise. Uh, lately, I, I've been starting with um, character and setting. So my, I have one book about growing up in New York in the 80s, um, another book about uh, the World Series of Poker, um, so, and sometimes I'm reading an article and think, oh, that's a weird job, uh, and sort of speculate about it. Sometimes I'm just walking down the street and, and uh, have a weird notion that stays with me. From book to book, I, I, or I tend to have an idea or two, and then if I'm not sure, whichever one I keep thinking about is the one I should pursue. So if I have two notebooks, and this one has like one paragraph and this has five pages. Maybe I should stick with the notebook that has five pages of ideas in it. And then I'll take notes for six to nine months or a year, uh, figuring out the characters and outlining. Um, I do a lot of work before I start writing. Um, I have to know the beginning and the end. The middle can be fuzzy. And of course, once I start writing, I can change things around or throw things out. But I have to know what the destination is before I set out. 
and then uh, and each day when I start when I start to work, I know what that day's plan is. So introduce the sheriff, introduce the sheriff's deputy, because um, it seems it's, it's hard enough to find the right words each day if you don't actually know what's going to happen. It seems twice as hard. So um, uh, and then hopefully I'm not teaching or traveling a lot uh, when I want to uh, get to work. I need like six or nine months free um, with limited interruption. You know, I can go to the dentist or something, but uh, take a family trip, but hopefully I'm not uh, too involved with anything else. And then um, eight pages a week seems like a good quota. If I can do, um, keep that up, that's like 30 something pages a month. And over six months, that adds up to a lot. Um, and it could be Monday and Tuesday, and then Wednesday or Thursday, I you know, go to the doctor or uh, have some other th something else, and then pick it up on Saturday and Sunday. But if I get, but um, today's don't matter. But if I get if I get seven, eight, nine pages a week, I feel like I've done a good piece of work this that week. I guess I, I, I know I'm going to commit to a book when I can't stop thinking about it. You know, if I keep doing the work and keep writing down notes, it's a good weeding out pro uh, process. So. I've never gone to the point where I've gone to page 200 and thought, ah, actually, this is sort of a bad idea for a book. Um, if I've spent so many months working on it and outlining it, uh, that sort of tells me that um, it's a viable idea. And especially if I've had the idea for, for many years and I haven't worked on it, then that you know, sort of proves its uh, worth.